Hello everybody and welcome to our remastered Demon Dark Blood 3 boss ranking. It's been years since I've ranked things across the entire Soulsborne series, so we're back with a four-part return to Blood Souls to rank the top 10 hardest, easiest, worst, and best bosses in the franchise. When I first began making Souls content back in 2016, I had only played each game three times at most. Heck, the footage from my Dark Souls 2 videos was my first ever playthrough of the game. In the modern day, however, I've played each of the games countless times through our escapades on Twitch. And even though I don't play the Souls games much anymore, the experience I've collected over the last two years has colored my opinion on the bosses into an entirely different realm. That is the perspective of a veteran, a player that knows these bosses like the back of their hand, a player that knows every advantage available to them throughout the game that can be used against the bosses, a player that has grounded the fundamentals of combat so hard into their bones that they've completed challenges that tested the greatest limits of their resolve. But for this remastered series, we're judging these bosses on how they stack up for a standard playthrough, that is for someone who's well seasoned in the game. So if you see me using very strong builds in the footage, don't be surprised. I pulled no punches when taking advantage of the power at my disposal. Today's video will focus on the bosses that, despite my wealth of knowledge and experience, still give me trouble to this day. Of course, these rankings are 100% my opinion, and they'll be reflective of what bosses give my playstyle trouble and exploit my own weaknesses. Your selections would likely vary drastically from my own, so be sure to sound off in the comments with your own thoughts. With all that out of the way, here are the top 10 hardest bosses in the Soul series. Number 10, Old King Doran, Demon Souls. Old King Doran, better known as Long Schlong Dongan, is a fucking beast. The entry into his fight is so cool. The guy actually asks you to beat the shit out of him to prove you're worthy of the legendary royal blade that he protects. And I'm sure you're thinking with your complete build, okay, old man, whatever you say. Nani? You think that's bad? See how brutally your anus is destroyed by his donger. <laughs> what makes the fight so absurd is how perfect you have to be throughout. Unlike many other bosses where you can get away and heal, Doran actually can one-shot you if given the chance. And since it takes what feels like 375 years to whittle down his planet-sized health bar, it's reasonable you'd fall victim to him at some point. I actually don't know if I could fight Doran straight up. Bit strats are the only viable strats here, and Dongan spent just enough time making me his bitch over the years that he made his way onto this list. Number 9, Ancient Dragon, Dark Souls 2. If you could catch the lightning of Dongan's vinegar strokes in a bottle and turn that pure essence into a boss with all the power in the world to obliterate you, you'd have yourself an Ancient Dragon. Fuck this thing! I know today isn't the top 10 worst bosses in the Souls series, but it's like if FromSoft had a one night stand with a dragon and this mistake was born. You don't need any kind of perfect setup to be one shot by the Ancient Dragon. It just happens. Unless you have a healthy amount of bitch vigor, then you will get one shot by every single attack. And just like Doran, this fight lasts for what feels like an eternity. One small mistake and it is back to the bonfire with you. Fighting this dragon is a chore and it is one of the hardest errands you'll encounter in the entire franchise. Number 8, Black Dragon Calamite, Dark Souls Remastered. Continuing in the path of the dragon, we make a leap from shit swamp into the heavens. Ah, Calamite, at least they designed you well. They also designed you to give me the business with relative ease, but I forgive you. Rather than being difficult for highly damaging attacks or having a massive health bar, Calamite finds a smoother balance. The Calamity Snake does have a decent pool of health and does high damage, but he also has a much bigger bag of tricks, attacks far faster, has big hitboxes, and moves all around the arena to keep you on your toes. Learning his tells is vital because some of his melee-based attacks are followed up by a barrage of flames which can leave you reeling. This makes your windows to heal an attack much more difficult to find, and for an early series Big Beast boss, he does a pretty great job of keeping you out from under him. And god forbid you get caught in his Calamity Vision, making you take double damage for an extended period. All this brings him to a more balanced state than the previous two entries, but this balance makes for greater difficulty than either of those one-dimensional base cannon. Number 7, Dark Eater Meteor, Dark Souls 3. I'm gonna go ahead and guess that you expected the final boss in our trio of dragons to be much higher up on this list. There's a few reasons why I say that. For starters, the girth of his health bar makes our previous entries blush. He does imposing damage, even being able to one or two shot some of the bitchiest vigor builds, and he is fast like Calamite moving all around his large arena. While I give him the edge over Calamite due to his increased health giving you a smaller margin of error in this big endurance battle, he's not all that different. In fact, in some ways I'd say he can be easier than Calamite and it's what lands them on the bottom half of the list. While Meteor's attacks are difficult to dodge, they all have very well evidenced tells and are nowhere near impossible to avoid. If you do manage to avoid them, you'll find that Meteor leaves a few second window for you to smack his head, which takes the most damage anyway. It's great that the fight pushes you toward fighting him head-on, because I promise you that it's far harder to nip at his ankles or tail. Even with the large windows of opportunity though, you still have to be able to skillfully dodge all of his attacks and be ready to take advantage. That's much easier said than done, landing Meteor at the number 7 spot. 
Number 6, Sister Freed and Father Ariandel, Dark Souls 3. If you've seen my Dark Souls 3 difficulty rankings with DLC included, I'm sure you're left wondering why Freed is higher than Midir because it's contradictory. As I mentioned, opinions change over time, and I think looking at everything over my history with the game, while Midir and Gale before her are both incredibly challenging foes, no one has ever pushed me to my limits in Dark Souls 3 quite like Sister Freed and Father Ariandel. The first phase isn't too difficult and serves as a solid warm up for the next part of the fight where Daddy wakes up. <laughs> <laughs> Too fucking late, Dad's mad. This can go one of two directions. You can go full balls and beat off Father's health like your life depends on it. If you're fast enough, Freed will never bother attacking you and will instead go for healing him. You should be able to outdamage the healing in end phase 2 before anything bad happens. If Freed is overly aggressive though, you'll have to run around wildly and wait for a good opportunity, which can be very, very difficult. The third phase is the true challenge, however. Freed goes absolutely bonkers taking moves out of Lady Maria's toolkit. You know what else she takes? Her speed. Freed moves at a speed that is simply too too fast for Dark Souls 3. Your windows of opportunity to hit her are so minuscule that it took me hours to finally get to a point where I know when I can go after her, and they are few and far between. In the large moments you spend waiting, you'll have to fend off her fury, and it is ridiculously hard. In fairness, if she was slower, it would be too easy to backstab spam and stun lock her. So I do think it's fairly balanced under the circumstances, but that doesn't stop it from being what I feel like can be an enormous challenge. Number 5, Fume Knight, Dark Souls 2. Here he is, boys and girls! Phew, I seriously think that may be the most repeated comment I've ever received on any video. Raim is a challenging man, okay? When I made the original video, I had only fought him the one time and I didn't think it was all that bad. In repeated playthroughs and challenge runs, however, I've realized just how small the margin of error is in this fight. You have to worry about attacks from both hands and that can screw up your intuition. He moves pretty fast by Dark Souls 2 standards, healing can feel like an impossible gamble, and he does suffer from the ADP problem in the game leading to some questionable hitboxes. When you wrap all that up with a Phase 2 that does some of the highest damage in the series, and the potential for him to heal if you haven't collected the smelter wedges, it makes Fume Knight a boss to be reckoned with, and one that I am finally giving his proper due. Number 4, Defiled Watchdog, Bloodborne. Moving down a spot from his original ranking, the Defiled Watchdog is still as hard as ever. Don't mistake his drop to be that I suddenly find him any bit easier. Hell no, this dog still forces me to stay far away and use the strategy of keeping at a distance and smacking his face until it breaks. I am a tried and true smacker of booties, and I am actually scared to touch his. Instead, I'm relegated to a face smacker. Where else can I say that? the best way to handle a situation with a dog up in flames is to smack him in the face until he's dead. Somebody call PETA. Seriously though, to me it's never worth going against the different directions of his swipes to get in and damage the limbs because the Defiled Chalice makes it so easy to get one shot. This pupper will always remain one of Bloodborne's hardest challenges and he's well deserving of maintaining a spot in the top 5 after all these years. Number 3, Flame Lurker, Demon Souls. With time comes change however, and the top 3 is bringing in some fresh meat. Flame Lurker was a fringe contender for the original list, and after doing multiple other playthroughs of Demon Souls, it's impossible for me to not include him. There are very few bosses left in this series that can instill a sense of dread in me as I creep toward their arena, but Flame Lurker does exactly that. After all these years, I feel like I have an advantage in most fights due to my knowledge, but unless you overabuse magic, this monster is such an unpredictable quantity that I can never guess how it's gonna go. Sometimes I'm gonna get blasted to oblivion, other times Demon Souls day-to-day eye shines and Flame Lurker acts like a baboon. Whether you have an enchanted weapon, soul arrows, or bold enough to use a standard weapon, he always poses some kind of threat. Even with the near unlimited healing in the game, it doesn't matter if he doesn't give you that chance, which feels completely random. Do yourself a big favor if you aren't using magic and slap some sticky white stuff on your sword and beat him mercilessly with it. It's your best bet of making it out of our number 3 fight alive. Number 2, Lawrence the First Vicar, Bloodborne. Earlier we had a pattern of dragons, and now we have the flaming trio. The hardest of these fiery challenges is easily Lawrence. I feel like a broken record, but it's like he's the same as many of the lower entries on our list. Absurdly high damage mixed in with a ton of health. But unlike Calamite and Midir before him, he is even more balanced. And when I say balanced, I mean he's lightning quick in comparison, has a girthy range that makes even Long Schlong Dongan need to pick up his jaw off the floor, and he has fire after effects to boot that can stun you. I can't overstate how much distance Lawrence can cover in what feels like the blink of an eye. Many of his attacks have to be dodged at such a precise instant that it can feel nearly impossible. And if you mess up the timing in the slightest, you'll take double damage thanks to the counter system in Bloodborne, which can lead to one-shots. Even if it doesn't, you'll be left needing to heal against a boss that is liable to follow up before you can even react. He's ridiculous, and frankly, one of the most egregious examples of things leaning toward feeling like bullshit over being fair when it comes to bosses in the series. But there's one final boss that is able to take all the difficulty of Lawrence and pack it in a truly well-balanced fight that extends even beyond on the challenge of the first Vicar. And our number one boss, Gravity. Threw it on the ground. 
our real number one hardest boss in the Souls series, Orphan of Cost, Bloodborne. After two years, it hasn't changed, and unless we get another game in the Souls series, I don't think it ever will. Orphan of Cost is the sole boss left in the franchise that still to this day can beat me multiple times with ease on every single playthrough, no matter how much practice I put in. His level of aggression is arguably above what should even be possible in a game with Bloodborne speed. The damage he has to go along with it is some of the highest output in the franchise. He has a health bar that is comparable to any of the bosses on this list, and he has a phase 2 that boasts an even greater challenge than the first phase, which would be worthy of this spot on its own. Dealing with him jumping all over the place, throwing acid in your face, smashing you with his shrimp, and calling in swarms of lightning can leave you with little time to heal, attack, or do anything other than get overwhelmed in what can feel like an endless abyss of defeat. Orphan truly is the nightmare of the series, and that's a throne I have to wonder if he'll ever lose. But of course, these are just my opinions. Tell me which bosses in the Soul series gave you the most trouble in the comments below. I know I didn't include some bosses that were in the original video, suffice it to say they've gotten easier over the years and didn't quite make the cut. There's still three more rankings to come in this series in the coming weeks, so be sure to subscribe for those and more gaming content on the channel. Join our Discord to stay up to date on upcoming videos and streams on Twitch, and leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. It means a lot to me to know you're liking the content that I'm putting out. And of course, thank you all for watching, much love to you, and I'll see you in the next video.